Sechaz Yivam Mosdaf Chav Tes begins by concluding the opinion of Rabbi Shimon about Achos Zikukoso, when two sisters fall to Yivam. The Gemara will have a kasha on Rabbi Shimon's opinion, and the Gemara will answer it, and then we'll have our next Mishnah. The Mishnah will introduce the topic of Achos Ma'amoro, the sister of somebody who did Maimer. The Gemara will get into the concept of Maimer and how it works. Does Maimer count as being fully married, according to Beis Shammai, or does it not? So let's begin. The Gemara is analyzing the opinion of Rabbi Shimon. We know that there's an Isra called Achos Zikuka. So Zika is like a wifely connection, and therefore the sister of a Zikuka is also to do Yibum. The opinion of Rabbi Shimon is that this is an Isra de Eraisa. If you have two sisters falling to Yibum together, from separate husbands, but falling to Yibum together, they are there, and they're both falling to the same man. So that man sees each of them as being the sister of the other one who is his zikuka. The both achos zikuka. So says Rav Shimon, it's an isur deraisa. That both of them cannot do yibum. He has a drasha to explain it, and therefore they are both totally free. You do not require not yibum and not chalitza. Says Rav Shimon. Now, what if one of them was an isur mitzvah? He was not allowed to marry her or do yibum or chalitza to her midra banon because there is an isur mitzvah. There's a lav on her. I mean, her banon, the lav is not overridden. By the yibum, there I said it is, but Midr Banan it's not, so he can't do that yibum. So then Rabbi Shimon says, well, she has to do chalitza and not yibum. If one of them is an erva, though, so then that woman doesn't fall to yibum at all. She's not even a zika. In that case, the erva would not have to do anything because she's totally putter, and the other one could do yibum because she's not an achos zika, so she's just her own zika. Now the Gemara says, first of all, let's understand the halacha of. Isser Mitzvah. You're telling me if two sisters fall to Yibam and one of them is an Isser Mitzvah, so Daraisa they're supposed to do Yibam. That means Daraisa they're both falling to Yibam and they should both be considered Achos Zikukaso. So why would one of them require Chalitza? Why do they both require Chalitza? What's the point in Chalitza? Daraisa, we said Rabbi Shimon holds, if two sisters fall to Yibam together, there's no Mitzvah of Yibam at all. So what's the issue over here? Why do they require Chalitza? So my answer is because. Generally, if a woman falls to Yibam alone, without a sister, and she's an Isser Mitzvah, she requires Chalitza. We're afraid that if we allow this Isser Mitzvah to go free without Chalitza, people will think in a single case of Isser Mitzvah, they'll also be allowed to go free without Chalitza, because the Isser Mitzvah breaks the entire Zika, and there's no Chalitza required. So therefore, we said she requires Chalitza. Mercedes says, that's good for the Isser Mitzvah. Why do I have for her sister? Her sister made the rice, is totally free. Why does she require Chalitza? Mar says, it's simple, if we don't make her do chalitza, then people aren't going to do any chalitza. They're going to get confused, and the entire thing will fall apart, and nobody will get chalitza, and we'll be back to the same problem. Mar says, well then, if that's true, so you're afraid that the woman has rights to go free, she has to get chalitza in order to make sure that the other one gets chalitza. So in case one of them is an erva, so how come she doesn't require chalitza? You're saying the erva's allowed to go free completely? Why is she allowed to go free completely? We should say, if we let her go free without chalitza, then the other one won't get chalitza, or even evil. No, we don't make a gzair like that. That lach of erva, everybody knows. Everyone's clear on the lach of erva. It's very well known and famous. It's not an issue. The only time you have an issue is the lach of Isra Mitzvah, which is far less known. Okay, now we get to the next Mishnah, which discusses the lach of achos ma'amaro. So here we have a woman who's falling to Yibum, and her sister has a mimer to the man she's falling to Yibum. So we have three brothers, Reuven, Shimon, Levi. Reuven and Shimon are married to two sisters. Reuven dies without children, and Levi does mimer to Reuven's wife. Now, then Shimon dies without children. And now Shimon's wife is the sister of Reuven's balas mimer. Now, mimer is kedushin when you were supposed to do yibum. That's a questionable kind of situation. This woman is the sister of a mimer marriage. It's not a complete marriage. On the other hand, it's not a zika, because she did a little bit of marriage. So what's the halacha here? What are you supposed to do? So Basil holds, she, he has to get rid of both of these women. He cannot stay married to each of them. He can't stay married to the woman he did mimer to, because mimer doesn't count as a marriage. And therefore, the woman who he did mimer to is in achos ziku kaso. Her sister, Shimon's wife, who is falling to Yibam now, is a zika, and she's a sister. So she's forbidden to her husband, even though they did Kedushin. That Kedushin doesn't make her already fully married, and therefore she's forbidden. 
Now, the Zikuka is also Aser, because she's an Osa Achos Zikukasa. She's even stronger than Achos Zikukasa. She's an Achos Ma'amoro. So they're both forbidden. He has to get rid of both of them. The one who got Mamre requires a Get and a Chalitza, and the other one requires just a Chalitza. Now, Beis Shammai disagrees. Beis Shammai says that the Mamre counts as if they're married. And therefore, they're completely married, and she's not viewed as an Achos Zikukasa. She's viewed as a wife. She's viewed as a full wife, and we don't say that she's the sister of a skuka. Now, that being the case, he's allowed to stay married to the one he did Maimar to. The other one is the sister of his wife. So she goes free because of Achos Isha. Okay, that's the halacha. And again, in review, Beis Hillel says both women are forbidden. Beis Shammai says that he can stay married to his Maimar, and the other one is free because she's an Achos Isha. Now, the Gemara, the Mishnah concludes by saying that in Basil Salacha, this is the case where we say, He can't stay married, he can't marry either a woman, he has to send them both away. So the Gemara says, what do you mean this is the case? What case are you excluding? The Gemara says, another case that we're excluding, and that is a case much later in the Afkof Test, where Yeshua has another example of where both women have to be sent away. And Rabbi Yeshua is there disagreeing with Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Lazar, which we don't pass like Rabbi Yeshua, we hold we don't have to send both women away. What's that case? That's a case where two sisters are flowing to Yibum. One of them is uh, a Kitana. The, the man that she was married to, she was married in a rabbinic marriage. It's not a real marriage. And therefore she could do mean and she could form her way out of it. Midrash says she's not married at all. So what's Allah in this case? So Rabbi Yeshua says, neither of them can marry the man that they fall Yibum to. The Kitana cannot stay married to her husband because she's an Acho, she's an Acho Zikukoso. The other woman's falling to Ibam, and she's not considered fully married because she's only married Midra Banan. Therefore, she's now also to her husband. And the one who's falling to Ibam is also also because she's not only an Acho Zikukoso, she's even an Acho Ishto Midra Banan, and neither of them are allowed to marry him. He has to, she, the Kitana has to do Maimer, and the other one has to get Chalitza. Now, Rabbi, uh, Elazar and Rabbi Gamliel disagree there and they say different opinions, different ways to work it out and that's how we paskin and therefore we don't hold like Rabbi Shua that in that is a case in which both have to our mission is excluding that case alright, now the Gemara has a question as to what the Beis Shammai really hold Beis Shammai over here said that the Maimer counts as a marriage and the, she's fully married and not an achos zikukaso, and her sister is totally free. She's an achos isha. So the Gemara has two versions as to limitations as to what Beis Shammai really hold. So the first version is taught by Rav Lazar, and he says as follows: Beis Shammai do not hold that the mimer is a real marriage. If the mimer was a real marriage that would be considered yibum, then if they wanted to break it, all they would require was a get. In a yibum situation, once yibum is done fully, they're fully married. There's no chalitza required anymore. They just require a get. Bishami doesn't hold away. Bishami holds that a mimer is not a full marriage, and if he wants to send her away, he requires not only a get, but also chalitza. What is a mimer useful for? A mimer is useful that she's not considered to be the sister of a skuka. She's not considered to be falling to yibum now, and therefore she's falling to yibum, and her sister is also falling to yibum. She's not that. She's not the sister of a skuka. She's not an achos zikukaso, and therefore that's not an issue, and that's why she's allowed to stay married. So Gemara says, we have a proof to this. The proof is in the case of Two brothers married to two sisters, and both of them die at the same time, and they both fall to Yibam to two other brothers. So Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Reuven, Shimon are married to sisters, they die without children, those two sisters fall to Yibam to Levi and Yehuda. And the halach of there was, neither of them was allowed to do Yibam. Meshamai said, if they do do Yibam, they're allowed to stay married, but the, there's no way for them to go do Yibam. So the mercy says, why not? Let them both do Mimer. Mimer is not an Isser. Mimer is just Kedushin. So they could both do Mimer. If they do Mimer, then it blocks the other one's Zika. If it makes them a full wife, and therefore they're considered to be fully married, so let them each do Mimer, and then the, it breaks the Zika with, with the other one, and everything's fine. So they should just be able to do Mimer. Obviously, Mimer is not a full marriage. And uh, it doesn't solve the problem. Zikumar says, hold on a second. But even if you say Maimer just breaks the Zika situation, so it's not considered to be an Achos Zikukaso, Maimer makes it look as if they're married and this and they're not in the Isser of Achos Zikukaso, that's the extent that it works, then this should still have a solution here. 
the two brothers, Levi and Yehuda, could still do Maimer, and that would break off the fact that each one is in a Chos Ziku Kaso. Then that should make um, each one can stay married to the one that they have, because by doing that Maimer, they made their wife not in a Chos Ziku Kaso. So obviously we have to come up with a different reason that this solution doesn't work, and that reason has to be that Maimer in this situation is weak, because they were not allowed to do Yibum. Mimer is a type of Yibam. So even though there's no Iser by just giving Kedushin, but it's a situation of doing ma- of, of doing Mimer in a case we're not supposed to do Yibam, that's a very weak Mimer, and therefore that doesn't count even to break off the Zika. If that's true, then you can't prove anything as to the fact that Mimer doesn't make them a full wife. Maybe Mimer generally really does make a full wife, but here we already said this is a weak Mimer because it's a Mimer that they couldn't, they weren't allowed to do Yibam, so maybe that's why it doesn't make a full wife. But it doesn't prove what a regular Mimer in a case of Heter would do. You know, the Gemara has a second version of this discussion in the opinion of Beishamai, and that's brought by Ravashi. Ravashi's version, also quoting Rav Lazar, is that the halacha of Beishamai said that uh, Maimur is considered to be a marriage, doesn't work to fully potter the sister. doesn't mean that the sister is now an achos isha, and she gets off without a chalitza. Sister is not an achos isha. Sister is an achos Maimur. She still requires chalitza. So it says the Gemara, we have a proof for that. Proof is again from the case of the four brothers, two of them married to two sisters, the fall to Yibam. And again, as we saw earlier, there's no solution there. They both require Chalitza. The Gemara says, why is there no solution? Let each one do Mimer. Mimer is permitted. And by doing Mimer, it makes the other one putter without any Chalitza. If it makes the other one putter without Chalitza, then the one that they did Mimer to is no longer an Achos de Kukoso, because her sister no longer has a Zika. So then he could stay married to her. And that will be a solution for both of them to do Yibam, and everything should be fine. Where it says, um, that it would seem to be a good proof, but the problem is that the language of the Mishnah, where Beis Shammai says that the sister can go free, says she can go free, she says she can go free because she's in a, she's a, an, uh, Eishasach. She's an Achos Ishto and she's an Eishasach. So why, how can you tell me that she needs Chalitza? Beis Shammai, the Mishnah clearly says she doesn't need Chalitza. So what do you have to say? You have to say there's a weak member and a strong member, like we said earlier. The case in our Mishnah, is a strong mimer, because she could have done yibum. Instead, he did mimer, so that's a very strong mimer, and that potters the sister as an achosisha. In the case, in the previous mission, we brought a proof, there he was not allowed to do yibum, and he went ahead and did mimer. That's weak, and therefore that doesn't potter the situation, and um, that's why it would not be a good solution to make them marriageable in any way. The Gemara now continues to analyze Beishami's opinion. Beishami again holds that Maimur is a very strong thing. It's considered to be married. This Gemara says, Rabbah asked, how does Beishami view Maimur? Does he view it as a Kedushin or as an Esuin? We know there are two stages to every regular marriage. And that's first is a Kedushin or Erisin, where they're engaged in a certain level of Isra that's created. And then after Chopa, there's a full Nesuin. The Gemara wants to know, according to Beishami, which is it? Is it considered Kedushin when you do Maimur, or is it considered Nesuin when you do Maimur? So Gemara says, what's enough Kamina? Who cares? What halachic difference does it make? So the Gemara offers a few things. Gemara says, well, first of all, maybe it makes a difference as far as the halacha of a man being Matami for his wife, and her being Matami for him. The Rashi struggles to find here what's the issue of her being Matami to him, even if he's a Kohen, there's no issue of being Matami. Him being Matami for her is only allowed if he's a Kohen, if it's his wife. But what's the problem for her? So Rashi first says it's a, it's Perhaps just that if she's chayev to deal with the kvura, Rashi says maybe it's in a case where she's not allowed to be matami, like before yantif. Nigmara also says maybe it's about um, we need to know if it's considered erison or chupa as far as being mefir nidorehav. She makes a vow, can he cancel it? Uh, does he inherit her from her if she dies and she had property that belonged to her? Does she collect her suba? So Gemara says, in all these things, a regular Kedushin doesn't have these halacha. The husband's not matame to her, she's not matame to her husband, he doesn't inherit her, ksuba she could collect. But in all these, if he wrote for her, she can collect from Kedushin, then she can collect. But in all these things, a regular Kedushin doesn't create a marriage, as far as these halachas are concerned. So for a regular Kedushin, which is Kedushin Deirais, it doesn't create. Mimer, which is only Deirabunan that it considered anything, Deirais, it's nothing, for sure doesn't create any relationship. So what exactly are you asking? Who cares? What's the difference if it's Ayerson or if it's Nesuin? So Gemara says, no, maybe, or my question is, do we sh- does she still require Nesuin? If he goes ahead now and he's together with her without ever doing chuppah, does that create a full Yibam relationship? And now if he wants to break it, all he requires is a get? 
or does do you require Chopa to complete the process? Emma says, what do you mean? Every Yibam doesn't require her consent. It doesn't require Chopa. Every Yibam, if he comes to her, Baal Karcha, it creates a complete marriage situation and it can be broken with just a get. So the fact that he did Maimur before makes it worse. Amir well, Banan is the only significance of the Maimur and that makes it stronger. So what's the question exactly? For sure, uh, it would not require Chopa and it would be a complete marriage and it would be dissolvable with just a get without having to do Chopa first. So he says, no, my question is, is that maybe by doing Maimur, the Yibum possibility was weakened, and regular Yibum, classic Yibum, which is just marital relations, doesn't work, because the Zika went away. And he has to do Ayrson, and then he, once he did Ayrson, he has to go do Chuppah. So that's my question. What is Lacha? Does she have to do Chuppah or not, or can he continue with a regular Yibum process afterwards? So this is where we could potentially bring a proof from a case that we have three opinions of Tanaim as to what happens if a lady falls to Yibam and she makes a neder. Is her Yavam allowed to be Mayfair? Is he allowed to cancel her neder? Now, a woman's husband has the power to cancel her neder through a process called Hafara. Question is, does her Yavam have the power? So we have three opinions. Rav Lazar says yes. Husband's allowed to cancel the Yavam, that is, is allowed to cancel her nadar. Rav Yeshua says it depends how many brothers there are, how many yavam, how many yavams there are. If there's only one, then this for sure is zika to him. He's allowed to. If there's more than one, then it's a split zika. We don't know which one's going to end up doing yibum, if any, and therefore they are not allowed to cancel. Rabbi Kiva says no. In all cases, even if there's two yavamos, two yavams, they are both allowed to cancel her nadar, just as the husband. Smur says now I understand the opinion of. Rabbi Yeshua, and he understands the opinion of Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva is good. He says that the Zika is very strong. Even if there's two Yavam, still a strong Zika, they're allowed to cancel her Nidarm. Now, Rabbi Yeshua holds that there is uh, a Zika to one, and not a Zika to two. A Zika is only strong enough if it's a Zika to one person, to one brother. If it's a Zika to two, then it's not so strong. But Rabbi Lazar how does he say that, that even if there's two, they're both allowed to cancel her, her nidoros? How could that be? If there's two, you don't know who's going to do the yibum, so there shouldn't be any strong zika at all. So in that case, so Rav Ami answered that question. And Rav Ami said, we're talking about where they did Mimer, and it's opinion of Beishamai, who holds that Mimer is a marriage. So the reason that he's allowed that, th- that those two are both allowed to cancel her in Dharam is because there's a Mimer there. So Gemara says, so you see that Bershama is obviously holding that a Mimer is a Nisuit, because if a Mimer would just be a Kedushin, then the Halacha is that a woman who is Mikudeshes, her husband and her father together have to cancel her vows for them to be cancelled. A woman before she's married has the hafara power resides with her father. After she gets fully married, it goes with her husband. When she's in between, when she has kedushin, but not nisuin, they have to do it together. So this case, though, it doesn't say they have to do it together. This case, it says that the husband, the yavam, that is, the one who did the mimer, is allowed to do it by himself. At least that's what it sounds like. So clearly, we're holding that it's nisuin and not erison. So Mer says, no, not necessarily. Yitzchak says it could just mean that the husband and the father have to do it together, and it really is Nisuin. So now the Gemara has a kasha. According to Rav Lazar, who we said earlier holds, that Beishamai says that Maimur is not a real Kenyan. Maimur is only considered to be a Kenyan that this woman is not considered to be an Achos Kukoso anymore. So over here, why should the husband have a right to cancel her vows? What, who, who is he? What is he involved? He's not really married to her. Just the, the, the mimer that he did is enough that she can't be in a chos zikukasu. So the Gemara says that Rav Loza will tell you it's not just a kasha me, it's kasha Renachman bar Yitzchak, because how could he say that the husband and the father have to work together? It doesn't say they will cancel her nether, it says he will cancel her nether. Obviously the husband can do it himself. So what do you have to say? 
I have to say that we're referring to a situation where she got a court decree that he has to pay her mizonos. He has to give her food. That can happen under certain circumstances. In a case like that, the husband has to give her food, or the yavam has to give her food, he has the right to cancel her vow, because the vow can be made against him. It can be made to say that he's not getting anything from her. Well, if he's paying for her support, then he has a right to cancel any vow that affects him negatively in the rights that he has that are in exchange for the rights that he pays for her food. Now, the Gemara has a, another answer, and that's that Revelaz will say, when I said that it doesn't count as a full marriage, it doesn't mean it doesn't count as a full marriage altogether. It counts as a full marriage for everything except the fact that she's not enough to just get a get. That's what I said. But it counts as a full marriage in the extent that he is allowed to be Mayfair. The only thing is, if he wants to get send her away, he's not enough to do just to get. It also requires Khalid.